Hello guys and welcome back. This is episode 7 of Let's Paint and Eye Racing. If you remember from last episode, we finished up the base. Uh, we finished up uh, vectoring out some of these logos and putting them on the car. And hopefully today we're going to actually finish up the paint scheme itself so we can post it on Trading Paints. So uh, the first thing we're going to do before I even start anything is turn off some of the Eye Racing stamp decals. Some of the stuff we don't want, like this RC12 here and here, uh, as well as all of the, the carbon fiber textures and things on the back wing. We want to get rid of all of that. And this is easy enough to do. Uh, you can turn off uh, specific aspects of the paint scheme right here. So uh, the pit box colors, if I turn it on and off, is right up here and determines the color of the pit box. We're going to switch that off for now. And the color changeable logos are the logos that change colors in the uh, iRacing paint booth. And in this case, they're the RT12R here and here. And we want to get rid of those as well. So we're just going to switch those off as well. So we can just switch that entire thing off. Now we also want to get rid of the carbon fiber on the rear wing. And you can do that in this folder. If you scroll down, you'll see a layer, car detail, wings, and wing braces. Car detail uh, shows you the stuff that's stamped. So we'll leave that on for now uh, because we can't paint over this area anyway. What we want to turn off here is the wing and the wing braces because we're going to put our own on. Okay, And now that that is off, we can start painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on some metallic layers. Metallic layers really help uh, make the colors pop and make the car really just stand out. Uh, and so I've already downloaded some. These are the metallic layers from Matthew Nethercoat. You can get them on his thread on the forums. And when you open them up, it looks just like this. It's uh, a canvas, it's 2048 by 2048, so the right size. And basically, it's got a bunch of layers. Well, one of them is the name, so his uh, signature on this. There's this highlights control layer, which we're not going to be using. A metallic flake layer, which adds a little bit of uh, metal flake to the image. But most importantly for us, it's got this layer called highlights. So what I'm going to do is just uh, go back to my image. I'm going to make a new uh, group. So I'm going to make it above the paint scheme, but below the logos. And then, yeah, metallics. I'm going to name it. And I do this personally, this is the way I like to do it. I like to put the metallics below the logos so that the logos kind of pop out a bit. Uh, but you can try putting them above or below and see what works best for you. This is just the way I like doing it. So we're going to come in here, I'm going to grab the highlights, the flake, and the, this control layer. Uh, so this is one way, and I'm going to duplicate them and put them into my, into my file. So this is one way of, of doing uh, metallics. Sometimes they'll end up with highlights and shadow layers that you can play. So the highlights do the, the highlights, the bright parts, and the shadows color and shadows on the car. This particular uh, style doesn't have that. Uh, the way I like to do it personally, I don't like using the metal flake and I don't like using this highlights control layer. The way I do it personally is I take the highlights and I switch the blending mode. It's normal. From over here, there's, you have a whole bunch of different things to pick from. And they all do different things. So you can actually just sit and scroll through these and, and see what works best for you. I personally pick uh, overlay. And I think that as just a little bit of a... It still retains the color and doesn't wash it out but it's still way too harsh. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the opacity on this layer and I'm just going to I'm going to tone them back a bit. And we'll just see where that takes us. Maybe around 35%. And you can see when I turn it on and off, you can see it kind of just adds a little bit of a shimmer that that dies away there. So, I think that looks pretty good. Let's just see what it looks like on the car. There you go. You can see it just adds a little bit of depth coming down here, which is really nice. It just adds a little bit of oomph to the paint. And you can tone and play with these how you see fit when you're making a paint scheme. There's no real set of rules on how to do it, but my personal take on it is the more subtle, the better. Okay, so now we have metallics, which is great. Uh, what we're going to do now is Matthew Nethercoat has also produced for this particular car, a series of rough add-ons. And so this includes a, so it, even you open the file, it's just got, looks exactly like this. Again, it's got his, his signature on it. 
It's got a folder that's full of uh, Porsche signage. You can see as I turn things on and off, one of them is the badge there. There's a whole bunch of badges in the back. Uh, there's a whole bunch of general add-ons, so window banners, uh, all of this stuff here that's uh, related to the wing that we're going to be using, all these little arrows. Uh, it's also got a whole bunch of number plates, if I can switch them on and off here. So for American Le Mans, so you can just click them and turn them on and off as you see fit. What we're interested in is this general add-on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this whole layer, duplicate it, and throw it in our file. And from here we can come in and just pick what we want. Make sure I make sure it's above metallics. So let's see what I want. I want the battery sticker definitely. I like the style. I personally like the style one of arrows. So they kind of look like uh, these guys right here. I actually want to put them all the way on top, even on top of the logos that. Oops. Come on, go where you need to go. Oh, this, uh, derp. this guy here. There we go. So that everything appears on top of the logos like it should, like the hood pins should be on top of the logo, not below them. So I personally prefer the style 1. There's also a style 2 that's oop, is a more plain arrow. Uh, there's also a bunch of different bonded pins. There's these kinds and these kinds. And if you go in here, you can put a carbon fiber overlay on them if you so fit. I like them just like this. There's carbon fiber mirrors, which I don't really want because I want my mirrors to be green, so I can just turn them off. There's door handle arrows, two styles. One like here, right on the door handle, and one over here, but I don't want any of them either. The extinguisher sticker, you can see it flicking ring on and off right here. Then there's this folder called Rear Wing, which has all of the different textures and stuff for the rear wing. I want to use this, but I want to put it under the metallic. So right now I'm just going to grab it and pull it up to the top to get it out of the way, and I'll turn it off. So I'll come to that in a second. Uh, this particular car has a front windscreen banner, but not a rear one. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the rear windscreen banner off and leave the front one on. Uh, and also the... So I'm going to do first, I was just going to recolor this windscreen banner because, uh, well, in this particular picture it's yellow, but in all the other ones I have it's this same green color as the wing mirrors. So I'm just going to double click on this, and the same way we did a cover, color overlay on the logos and on everything else on the wireframe, I'm just going to do a color overlay, grab the color, pick the green, hit OK, hit OK, and that's done. So I've recolored the windscreen banner, oops, to green. Uh, now the tow hooks. So the tow hooks are red and that's fine, uh, especially that's fine for the rear, so the tow, there's one in the back here, but it's not fine for the front because the front is pink and the tow hook for the front should actually be, as you can see, white and not red. So this is easy enough to do and we can do this with masks. So I'm just going to make a copy, duplicate the layer, hit enter. I'll turn one of them off. I'll call this one I'll rename it Tone Hooks Arrows Front. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a mask that hides everything except this front tow hook arrow. So I select the tow hook arrow, I have the layer selected, and I just hit Add Mask. So now it's added a mask that's hidden everything, so you can see this one's gone. Everything except this, this uh, rear tow hook. So now I can turn the layer back on, the second layer. I'll do the same thing for the front tow hook, mask it off. Now I can basically, so I can rename this one to rear. Now what I want to do is change this rear front tow hook to white, and I can do this with a color overlay just like I've done before. So I double click, color overlay, white, okay. And so there we go. So the front tow hook is white, the rear one is red. Perfect. So now let's take a look at what we got. That, that. And you can see it's added a lot of nice uh, depth and detail to the car. So we have the tow hooks pointed out. We have these cool little uh, arrows and um, bonnet pins on there. We have the front uh, banner here. And we have the rear tow hooks here. And we got some pins back here. And now you can see that the wing is nice. It doesn't have this carbon fiber uh, texture on it that was stamped on originally. Okay. So now let's deal with this rear wing. 
So I'm going to grab the rear wing, and like I said, I want to put it, I want the metallics to act on the rear wing. So I'm just going to grab it, and I'm just going to drag it below the metallics. So now the metallics are acting on the rear wing, and I can go into this folder and pick what I want. I don't want the carbon end plates because I want them to be green. I don't want the wing uh, to be carbon because I want it to be white. Uh, and I don't want the wing mounts to be carbon. The wing mounts are are these little pieces, one, two, three, four, right here. I want them to be white as well, so I'll turn them off. So he's included carbon and metal style uh, for this. Metal is like a, an alum brushed aluminum kind of thing. And I don't want that either, so I'll turn that off. What I do want is the, the wing braces, these guys, to be in carbon. So I'll just click that on, and that's it. Rear wings are done. You can see if I... that, that, and now they're black. They're actually in carbon fiber if you look really close. You can see that here. So that's done. So he's also included a, a whole slew of, uh, in here, a whole slew of, si of uh, number plates. And so you can come in here and just grab, so if you want ALMS GT, you just uh, duplicate the layer and add it to your file like that. Okay, I personally, you put them on top as well with everything else. Like that. And if you save it, there you go. Your car is set up for ALMS GT. But this particular car is an IMSA GT3 Cup car, and he doesn't have that in this uh, set of, of uh, add-ons. So what we're going to have to do is make our own. And what I have done ahead of time is do exactly that. So I've made a group called number plates. Okay, and so what I've done is I've gone in here and used the, remember there's number blocks that we turned on? I used that as a guide. So I basically, I'll just break it down what I did for you. I went ahead and I took a rounded rectangle and I drew it around the number block and I spaced it out evenly so that the number of pixels on either side of this block are the same. Then I just added a stroke onto it. And here it's a three pixel black stroke, like that. Okay, so I went actually ahead and, uh, uh, let's see where it is. I got a nice, I think it's in here. So I found another version of this car, or a different car from the same series. So you can see that's the number, and then there's this rounded rectangle that's stroked, and then there's a square rectangle and says IMSA GT3 Cup. So I use this as a model to, to make it. Here we, go, here we go. So this is the rounded rectangle part. And then I basically just drew another rectangle on top of it, right, without a rounded rectangle in white. And so that's underneath. And one thing I tried to do when I did this, so I drew the rectangle and then I basically, I hit control T to free transform. And then I pulled all of these separately. So not uh, non-constrained, uh, adjustment of the size with the free transform and I just lined them up so that it gave a nice sharp edge and not something like like this right where it's kind of like half a pixel and fading out so it gives a nice a nice clean sharp edge all the way around and I left a little bit of a, a gap at the bottom because I have to put some text in here so I went in with the text tool here this is Arial Narrow, I found, I went through all the fonts, I found that this one seemed to work the best. And I basically just typed imsa gt 3 cupcom and then I used free transform. Go away. So if you use imsa gt 3 cupcom So, like this, this is the same font, Arial Narrow. You can change the color right here. You click up here, so I made it black. And you can see that Arial Narrow, as it is, is really, uh, it's too thin and tall. So I just hit Transform, or Free Transform with Control T. And I just kind of did, again, a non-constrained transformation on it like that, just to kind of squash it down. And then I popped it right in the middle of this number plate. And so that's all I did for a number plate. Number plates are pretty simple to do. Uh, they just take a little bit of time lining things up. So I did that for the left side. And so that took care of the number plate. So you can see what that looks like. Like that. So it's not perfect. I mean, the real car, the number plate is up here, and the number font is very different. It's more narrow and tall. But I mean, 
this is kind of the best we could do with what we have. Uh, we can't change the numbers yet, so this is all we can do. Uh, so that's the number plate. I also went ahead and added a whole bunch of other logos uh, on my own time off camera. So on the rear of the car, I added this snow ahead logo here, which is this guy right here. It was already on a transparent background, so I just copied it, put it in here, converted it to a smart object, and sized it down. Uh, I won't show you that one there. On the left side, I went ahead and added a whole bunch of logos. Uh, so I added this Starret logo and this BBS logo. So basically, all I did for these was I, let's do, oops, let's grab this Starret one. I just went in here with the magic wand and I just, like that, selected all the colors, copied it, pasted it in here, converted it to a smart object, and then I did a, a color overlay on it to make it black. So you've seen all that before. And I kind of did the same thing with the BBS logo. I just selected it out with the magic wand, copied it in here, converted it to a smart object, and sized it down. Uh, I also, because we put this in here, this area right here I found was a little bare. So I went ahead and copied this right Motorsports logo, the, the one that I said you might be using later. I just popped it in right here. And I went ahead and threw on a whole bunch of the Yokohama logos. So uh, let's close this guy in here. Uh, here. So there's a Yokohama on the front here, the back here. There's one on the, the front nose and I put one on the rear. I don't know if there is. I couldn't find a good version of the car. I figured why not. I'll put one on, on the rear right here, which is, uh, which is right here. So there's going to be one here, 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 and on the nose. And so those are these guys here. Same deal. Uh, same deal with these. So basically the way I went ahead and did this stuff. Oops is I opened up the Yokohama logo. I went with the select tool because the, the logos on these, like this is a really big black border around here and the logos on the cars, the, the actual black border just ends right at the end. So I just used the marquee tool to select the, the area. Now instead of hitting control T and going to free transform, if you have the marquee tool still selected and hit right click, you can go transform selection like this. So now instead of when you make these adjustments like this, instead of resizing the image, all you're doing is changing your selection. So I went in here and I just changed the selection up and down to and fiddled it just so it's evenly tight all the way around. I hit enter, I copied it, pasted it into the new image, converted it to a smart object, just like you've seen me do before. And so there they are. And just to make them pop, these Yokohama logos have like this black, this white border around them. I went ahead and drew white rectangles behind them, like so. Let me turn the, the wireframe off, like this. So basically I drew a white rectangle behind it and then I used the transform to just make it pop out one pixel on either side. So it's nice and even and nice and sharp all the way around. I think I did it also there. And I also included these logos on the back, uh, on the rear of the car, like so, same deal. And also on the nose of the car, which is right here, I put it under hood, for right here. All right. So, sorry if I'm fast forwarding, I seem to be fast forwarding a lot of this. So I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter, uh, under, under 40 minutes. So, uh, if I'm going too fast, let me know. I can go back and show you how I did some of this stuff in more detail. So the next thing I did uh, is so the car has this Porsche Motorsport badge on the, the back. You can't really see it in many of the pictures. Uh, I could see it in a couple of the previews, but not particularly well. Uh, like right here, you can see it if you zoom in really far on this particular car right here. Now, I wasn't able to find, so this is the one that I wanted Porsche Motorsport North America, but I couldn't find a good high resolution version of this. What I could find is a high resolution version of this. It says Porsche Carrera Cup Australia, which is obviously not what I want to put on the car because this is a North American car. So what I did was I opened this up in Photoshop like this. Okay, 
And then I basically produced a bunch of rectangles where I basically just kind of filled in each of these. If you see, if I turn it on here, you can see like that. And there's another one here. So I basically kind of just drew in rectangles on top of, maybe I turn the uh, opacity down, you can see it a bit better. I drew rectangles like this on top of each of these, lined them up perfectly with uh, the rectangles that are there, and select the colors off them so I can just remove the text off of here, the Carrera Cup Australia. Then I went ahead and I wrote the motorsport in. So this is, I went through all of the fonts and I found that Arial Black. It's not a perfect match for it, Let's see. but it's pretty close. So. I went ahead with that, Ariel Black, and I did the same thing the same way we uh, we did the IMSA Cup. So I took it in, I sized it up, right? I looked at the, the original picture, I found the motorsport one like this, and then I just used the transform like this, and I just kind of, you know, shrunk it and stretched it until it fit in to this particular area. And then I wrote North America and I did the same thing. So this is, so I basically built this Porsche badge from one from a different series. So now what we can do is we can take it, I took it all, I converted it to a smart object, and I popped it in, bang, right there. So let's see all of the changes we've gotten so far. So we can see the start, the BBS, the right motorsports, all of these Yokohama badges here, here, on the front, on the back, the snow ahead. I spent a little bit of time nudging and shaping this around so it didn't clip into here or down here because that looked kind of ugly. And the Porsche Motorsport North America on the back. So it kind of finishes that off nicely. Uh, I also went ahead, if you look at the real car, there's this VP logo here. I went ahead and did that. So that's right here. And so this was straightforward, a little bit straightforward as well, much more straightforward than this was that so here's the logo I was working with let's put it in a you can hit a control N to open a new canvas and it opens it perfectly sized for whatever you have copied in the clipboard so I just went in here I selected out the background deleted it with the with the magic wand went in dropped a stroke down color white and then I just sized it up so that the stuff down here looked kind of nice so the fuels went nicely but now we have these big gaps here so i went in with the pen and i just kind of filled it all in i went in like this like this just like that just like we did on the uh on the front of the car when we were uh oops when we were uh um trying to fill in that little gap that was caused by the uh by doing the stroke, change it to white, right, and went all the way around and I did that and then just dragged it underneath to fill it out, okay, converted it to a smart object, dumped it in here, shrunk it down, there we go. Uh, I also went ahead and put the, some text here, so there's, if you look here, it says www.snowahead.com there, I went ahead and took that in right here, so this is kind of broken up across two pieces on this particular template. So it comes down here and the, there's a break right here. So what I did was I tried to put it so that the words break where the break in the in the seam in the template is so I don't have a letter that goes over the seam. Just a little trick to help you match up something like text. And then I spent some time to, to play with the angles on these just to make sure it fits nicely. I found that uh, it was brush script I think was the font fit nicely so that just kind of tucks that in there and so there we go that's pretty much this side of the car painted so now all we have to do is take all of this duplicate it to the other side uh, and then we got just basically two more little things which is the wing and the badge on the back so let's just duplicate all of our logos first so we can just grab the left side logos and this is why I organize my logos into left side and right side I can duplicate the group right side free transform flip them vertically just like we did for the rest of the car and then we can just tuck them in like so uh, 
And then looks like this Yokohama goes right on this point right here. So we'll use that as our reference, like so. So now all of the logos are duplicated from one side to the other, but there's a little bit of a problem. And I'm sure you can guess what that is at this point, is that they're all backwards. And this isn't a drift car, so we don't want everything to be backwards on the side of the car. So what we now can do is really easy to go ahead and change all of these around, is we just go into our logos. We'll start at the bottom with this UIS. You hit Control T to free transform and just flip it horizontally. And now it's in the right orientation. So we can do that with all of these. Flip horizontal. I'll leave this guy right now because he's a little more complicated. The Yokohamas, uh, you can flip them. I have these layers linked uh, like this. So you can, if you click two layers, you right click and hit uh, link, link layers. Then anytime you grab one of the two layers and try to move it, what did I link it to? Oh, I linked them incorrectly. That will be why. Unlink. So it's these two. Link. So these two layers, so this is this guy here and the white box for it. So I can grab this or the white box and move it. Damn it. Sometimes when you uh, when you um, duplicate these layers over, they don't always duplicate properly. So now if I try to move just the Yokohama, the white box moves with it, as you can see. Uh, whereas here's unlinked layers. I can grab the, the white box and move it separately from the Yokohama. So I have them all linked. So they basically move together. So I can just grab them, control T, flip them horizontally. Now it's the right orientation. I can also do it here. I can actually highlight both, flip them horizontally. Do the same with the VP, flip horizontally. Now let's do this, uh, this right motorsports. It's a little more tricky because it's got an angle. When I put it in here, I put it in at an angle like this. So in order to deal with that, it's really easy. If you used smart objects, this is really easy. If you didn't use smart objects, this is actually very difficult. So I can take it like this, I can right click it, I can flip it horizontally like this. And because now the angle data is kept because this is a smart object, all you have to do in order to rotate this into the right orientation is change this into the negative. So if this is 167, you change it to negative 167. Since it's negative 167, I just change it to positive 167. And now it's oriented in the right direction. So it's a really easy way of changing, of using angles, and it works only if you use smart objects. So let me come in here, control T, and there we go. Everything's laid out nicely here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the, with this, uh, this badging right here, or this uh, number plates here. So come in here, I have them right here, left side, duplicate group, call it right side, like so. So we're just going to take it. This one I can just rotate 180 degrees. And I'm just going to shove it down into place on the other side of the car. And I'll just rough it in first, like so. And then I'll come in, see because I was transforming it, it caused this little... It's not sharp at this edge, so that's easy enough to fix. You just go to free transform. And then if you tab up and down, you can move increments of less than a pixel, so like that, and just clean up the edges so they're nice and sharp. And because these are squares, it should be sharp on all four sides, and it kind of is. I'll go back later and clean that up. And now we can just nudge it into place like that. And this, because I rotated it and didn't, uh, and didn't flip it, this is already in the right orientation, so take a look, and there we go. Nice and nice and done. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a rounded, rounded rectangle and I'll throw it on top of this. I'll do that off camera. Uh, so right now, we're just going to throw some badging on here. So there's a Porsche badge on the wing, the GT3 Cup badge on the back, and oh, I need to, I'll rotate this on my own time. Again, I just need to rotate it, but it's going to be a little bit more work because I'm going to have to just change the the snow in ahead, right? So 
let's see, logos, right side. Oh, there's the number plates. Uh, right side, right here. So I, what I did was I actually wrote this and I converted it to a smart object and scaled it down just so it make it easy to rotate. But again, I just have to flip them horizontally. So flip it horizontally and then change the angle to negative. Hit OK. And that actually might play fine just like that. Let's take a look. If it's not, it might take a little bit more of a... Uh, Oh, yeah, it just looks like it needs to be nudged around a bit. I'll do that off camera. Looks like it just needs to be nudged up a bit, and then this kind of just needs to be moved back. I'll do that off camera. But you get the idea, right? It's just little, when you get to this point, it's just little uh, tiny movements that you just need to, like that. And then, like that. Just little tiny adjustments, bit by bit. All right, snow needs to come up a bit, which is this guy here. So, and that's what it is. It's just small, little, little things, bit by bit. You don't need to get it on the first shot. You just need to stick at it and eventually get there. But I think that looks pretty good. I might go back and just tweak this up a bit, but not too concerned about it right now because I just want to get these Porsche badges on here and the one in the back and then we'll be done. So fortunately in this particular set of layer groups from Matthew Nethercoat he has this Porsche signage and in here he is being nice enough to is there one for just the GT3 Cup? There is not. So it's this GT3 Cup right here Plus this Porsche badging here, so we can take that and work with it. We'll duplicate that, add that on our layer, and we'll grab the one off the rear wing. Right, da, 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 rear wing top, which is this guy right here. We'll take that, we'll take him as well. We're just picking what we want off here. And let's turn this guy on. So the Porsche on the back, on the back wing, should be black. So, what we'll do is we'll just take it, we'll do a color overlay, make it black, and I'll just put that over here for now. And then the one on the back, we don't want this Porsche here, but we want the GT3 cup here. So we'll just make a mask, go with black, get rid of that. Just like that. There you go, and there you go, just the way we want it. Now I still need to come in here later, and I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this off camera because you've seen me do this before. I'm gonna grab this Porsche Motorsport badge off here, and I'm gonna shrink it down and stick it here because in the real car, it's right here. And I'm also gonna grab a, an IMSA uh, badge off the internet, and I'll stick it on here as well. And uh, I think then that'll be it, and that's it. So, have I been talking for a long time? Oh my word, I've been talking for a long time. So I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, I'm sorry if this was a little bit rushed. I'm trying to keep it under half an hour and uh, get everything done that I need to get done um, so you can actually see me paint this car. Uh, but yeah, I think we're, we're getting there pretty much close. These are, you know, just doing the finishing little touches here. Maybe uh, I'll grab some carbon fiber texture. We'll see. Um, I'll do this off camera if I do it. And I'll just take it and I'll, I'll clip it using the, the alt technique between layers. And I'll clip that texture to this front here just to make this um, front carbon fiber. Maybe I'll turn the opacity down. I'll leave the black on. I'll turn the opacity down just so it's not really harsh. It's just kind of like a a very faint mild carbon fiber just so it's not in, so in your face uh, and what I'll do is the same thing I think I don't like this these colors I'll come in here with white and I'll change the red on these logos to white so I'll, I'll draw boxes over these logos and clip them to it the same way and I'll draw maybe make this a little bit darker but other than that uh, and I'm gonna take a uh, I'll just take the one he added He's got some, some nice 
poor signage here for the front as well. The front windscreen banner. I think I'll just actually take that. Duplicate it. And I'll take that as well. Why not? Because it actually looks really nice. So I'll just pop it on top so it's on top. And I'm thinking... Black? Black. Definitely black. Definitely. Definitely black. And... There we go. And I think we're pretty much done. So the... Oh, I also need to take... A, huh, no, not even. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on here as well. So I'll do all that off camera. And I will come back next episode, show you the completed car, and then we'll talk a little bit about selling your work. And not selling like selling for cash. I mean like selling like making people want to use it. So we're going to go over uh, loading things up onto trading paints, posting them up on the forums, taking nice screenshots, stuff like that, uh, just to make your, your work look more desirable. I mean, in my opinion, even a beautiful car, a good screenshot can make or break a paint scheme. So you really got to really sell it out there, make people want it with that screenshot. So we'll talk a bit about that next episode. And... I'll finish all the rest off episodes, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.